This video is for section 7.1, sampling distributions. There's a lot of new vocabulary in this section, so feel free to pause me whenever you need and get those uh, definitions written down. So to start this video, I have a large population of craft beads here. There's actually a couple thousand craft beads in here, and you can see that they're all either black or red. And what I'm interested in doing is estimating the proportion of craft beads that are red. Now, one thing I could do is I could just take these beads and dump them out all over the floor here. But again, there's a couple thousand. I don't really want to do that. But another thing I could do is I could just estimate it by taking a sample. And you see they're pretty well mixed up already. So I'm just going to take a random sample of beads here. And you can see that I have some red and some are black. And I could find the proportion in this sample that are red. And I could use that as my estimate. But we have to be careful here because there's two different proportions floating around. We have a proportion within this bucket that are red, a true proportion. But we also have a proportion within the sample. So we have to be very careful about our vocabulary and our symbols. So when we talk about populations, we talk about parameters. Notice they both start with the letter P. A parameter is a number which describes some characteristic of a population. So when I talk about the proportion within the population that are red, that's a parameter. But when I talk about a sample, samples, uh, we need statistics for that. Notice they both start with the letter S. Statistic is a number which describes some characteristic in a sample. So we have two different words, but we also have two different symbols that we have to focus in on here. When we talk about a population, we use the letter P to represent the population proportion here of red beads. We use the letter P. But if we're talking about a sample, we use P hat. Now we've seen this hat notation before. We saw it when we were talking about linear regression. The hat usually means some kind of an estimate of something. And here it means our sample proportion of red beads, an estimate of what we think the whole population might be. So different symbols, and moving forward, it's going to be very important that we use the correct symbols within the correct context. Now my question is here, what if over and over and over again I kept taking different samples? Would I get the same result? Would I get different results? How would those results vary? Well, I'm just going to reveal to you here that I happen to know what P is here. Um, this is actually 2,000 beads in here. It's just two bags of 1,000 each. And the population proportion is 0.50 here. It's 50-50. So what should you expect to see happen if I took repeated samples from this population? Well, certainly I would hope that I would get close to 50%. But maybe just through chance, maybe I overestimate and get 60, maybe even 70%. Maybe by chance I underestimate and I get 40 or 30%. What would happen if I took repeated samples here? Taking repeated samples over and over gets to the idea of a sampling distribution. Sampling distribution of a statistic is the distribution of values taken by the statistic in all possible samples of the same size from the same population. So a sampling distribution looks something like this. Notice here, I have P hat. I'm trying to estimate P. So I take all these P hats over and over and over again. Most of the time, hopefully, they'll center around 0.5. Sometimes I might get as low as 0 0.4, 0 0.3, maybe even a 0.2. But I might get as high as 0 0.6, 0 0.7. So this is the idea of a sampling distribution. And it's important to note that a sampling distribution is really a hypothetical distribution. It's a distribution of all possible samples of the same size. That's a lot of samples here. It's not just ones you take, it's all the ones we hypothetically could take. So one way to think of this, you need to think of this in stages here. Okay. Really three stages going on here. We have some kind of population, and usually that population, we don't know what P is. If we knew what P was, we wouldn't have to do all this sampling. From there, I could take samples of the same size. Let's say I took samples of size 100. Would I get the same P hat over and over, or would I get different P hats? Well, certainly I'd probably get different P hats, maybe sometimes 47%, maybe another time 49%, 52, 51. There would be some variability here within these samples. And if I took these samples over and over, and in fact, if I took every possible sample, I would get to the idea of this, a sampling distribution. And a sampling distribution shows every single uh, sample, possible sample, in one graph here. So we are using P hat here to try to estimate P. Okay? Now we need to talk about how good of a job do we think our P hat does at estimating the true proportion. Well, here it seems like my P hats mostly center around 0.5. I get some as high as 0.6, some as high as 0.4. There's certainly some variability, and we really do want statistics that tend to center around the true proportion. And if we have that, then we have what's called an unbiased estimator. A statistic used to estimate a parameter is an unbiased estimator if the mean of its sampling distribution is equal to the true value of the parameter being estimated. That means that p hat is a unbiased estimator of p because the center of its sampling distribution 
centers around the true proportion, which is 0.5. Okay? So we do want unbiased estimators. They're a good thing. We want to be able to capture or get really close to that true proportion. But like any distribution, we want to talk about center, shape, and spread. We certainly have the center here. We need to think about its shape and its spread. So what do you think would influence the spread of this sampling distribution? Certainly it goes out here as high as 0.8 or as low as 0.2. What do you think would influence the spread of this sampling distribution? And the spread of the sampling distribution is determined primarily by one thing, and that's the size of the random sample. Because think about it, if you had a choice between samples of size 10 or size 50 to try to estimate something, hopefully you'd go towards samples of size 50 because you would have some confidence that they would tend to center around the true proportion or the true mean. So that's a good idea here. But the overarching idea here is that bigger samples provide less variability, and smaller samples often provide more variability. So there's really two ideas at work here. We want unbiased estimators, estimators which tend to center around the true value of the parameter. And we also want to have low variability. Therefore, when it's plausible, we want to have bigger samples. Okay? The last piece of this is the population size. I really have a big population here, it's 2,000. And it turns out that the size of the population really does not affect the spread of the sampling distribution as long as the population is at least 10 times as large as the sample size. That's an idea that has come up in previous chapters. It's going to come up here again. But really, the overriding idea is we want to take samples from large populations. You don't want to take a sample of size 50 from a population of size 60. We want a population that's at least 10 times as large as a sample. So this video just had a lot of vocabulary in it. In the next two chapters, or next two sections rather, we're going to take a look at the center shape and spread of those sampling distributions using more mathematics.